welcome to Yorkshireman Models. Today we've got a nice little Curtis P40B Warhawk. As you can see it's an Airfix kit, 172 scale. This is going to be a full build video so you'll see me building it all, painting it, everything. So should be a good one. On the box here, I'm just showing you a bit of box, and box art because I'm going to get straight on with kit. Get a flying hour, one paint scheme by the looks, a skill level one. There's the paint scheme on the back. Very basic, green, looks like a grey underneath. Let's open it up and get going. Not even on this one yet. Let's see what we're getting. Oop. That's it. Are we empty? Yep. Yeah. We've got just poking out the instructions there. Some decals. Set of instructions. Looks simple enough this. One, two, just three pages full, which is nice. I like my nice quick kits like this because it's very fun to build. Let's see what we've got in here. No tells in that. Sometimes parts fall off in these uh, uh, fixed bags. We've got a figure, some wings and that on that one. The fuselage prop, just usual stuff. That one, looks nice enough. And there's clear part. Right, let's get building it. First page, which is when I spin around. The Fuel's a large. Oh, put that in first, do we? We'll blow that together, do we? Cut that off, it says. Yeah, fair enough. Right. Cut that out. As usual, I just nip me uh, pieces off with me nippers. Any type of nippers will do, even a pair of them cheap scissors will do it, to be honest. And then, a bit weird this one. Uh, wants the pieces glued together for the cockpit before you actually do it so uh, fit the seat so getting a bit of paint on it on the sprue as you can see and then that way it's going to make it a bit easier for me when I glue it all together next bit it's the usual to the propeller I've sped the video up a little bit here I hope, hope you prefer it and I'd be grateful if you'd leave a comment if you do like it or if you don't just leave a comment and just tell me do you prefer it when it's a little bit fast because I'm trying to shorten the videos a bit so it's a bit easier for you to watch and a bit quicker for me to make the videos. It's the Tammy R cement that I use for gluing, always do. Like I say, you can see there that the two pieces now, once these two are glued together, your cockpit's already painted inside because it would have been a nightmare to try and paint it any other way. Although you don't see a lot. Now this is the start of building up the actual seat section. You glue this piece in first. And Airfix has done this on a couple of the kits. And it's alright, it works fine. It's just a bit strange when you're used to just gluing the seat directly into the cockpit area and painting it all up. But yeah, the seat, the control panel, and that, they're just simple little things. There's not a lot of detail in this, to be honest. But then again, you don't get to see a great deal through uh, the canopy. And it's a closed canopy because you only got the one piece. Again, a little bit of cockpit green, just so I can then uh, paint, uh, well, put the decals on and all that. I will put a little bit of uh, panel wash on that. Just In fact, you can see there that it's a little bit darker because I put some panel on it, Sean, just so that uh, highlights a little bit of details that there is. The decals I fit as usual with Mr. Mark uh, Setter. Very simple decals, they're brilliant anyway because of the uh, cartograph ones. I do like them, the brilliant decals. Just dab away any excess. 
and she's fine. As usual, when I'm gluing big bits together like that, I like to put a little bit of the contactor on it, thicker glue. And then I'll just run a little bit of Tammy R, extra thin, just right edges. I always think it helps. A little bit of stronger glue just to, uh, once it goes off, gives a really good bond. And the Tammy R is pretty good, the extra thin, but if you, if you ever want to separate them, they can be quite easy just running a bit of Tammy R extra thin on the edges again. And this, I thought, I thought, look at that, slot straight in there. No hard sand, no sanding, no hard pressing it in, trying to click it or anything. Just play straight in, perfectly made. But, if you look, there is a bit of an edge coming there, down that. Because, as you can see, I've just put a little bit of filler in it, cleaned it off. It's ready for painting then. Easy enough done. Just putting this nose section on now. That machine guns or cannons, whichever it is, I have no idea, but they're on the nose. And the tail section again fits in perfectly. I had to sand one room a little bit because when I was trying to push it in, it didn't go. I think it's the next one I had to do, but it didn't go perfectly. But it was only a quick sand. This is the undercarriage, a little bit different when you've got it already in a pre made piece, but glued that in place. Usually I keep my undercarriage doors separate. This is just the Vallejo black primer, not the greatest primer, but it'll do for what I want to do with it. I just blast this on so the uh, umbro paints take a bit better. Umbro paints are a nightmare to put on, so any kind of primer always helps. What I'm spraying here is Tamiya's Neutral Grey XF53. I don't have the actual humbro one. But this is meant to be a very similar colour, so I've just used that. In all honesty, it looks really nice anyway. And I do like spraying tell me our paints. But this is the proper Umbro one now. And this one is the Umbro Acrylics. And I have got the number. Oh, it's 155. And it's what it tells you to spray in the box. I've thinned it quite a bit. Uh, I have to thin the umbrals, I find quite a bit if I'm trying to put them through my 0.2 needle airbrush. I probably should have used my 0.3 one and I wouldn't have had to thin it as much, but I just leave each part to dry a bit. Once they've dried, as you can see here, whacking on a, a nice gloss coat, ready for decal. You don't have to do this, but I find it stops silvering. And the decals, as you can see again, lovely decals. Nice crisp clear ones. I just move big ones about sometimes, either using my brush or my tweezers. Try and push out any excess moisture out. Well, Mr. Mark, uh, etc. out. That's just not quite straight. Just down a little tiny bit. Yeah, it's better. But yeah, once I've done that, I then just run over it with cotton bud. Just squeeze out any last and remove any moisture from off at the top. You can, when you've done, use a softener on them. Makes them a little bit, uh, the, the sinking to panel lines and that a bit better, conform more to the actual uh, kit. But it, it's up to you whether you use them or not. You don't have to use any of them. You could just use water. These are the round, well, the uh, ins American uh, insignias. And I, again, Easily put on, just cleaned up. And underside, the two main ones underside I'll show you is the US Army ones, and there's the Army. And luckily, you've got a panel line you can follow, which is showing you where that one goes. And the US. Again, following that panel line on the other side makes it a bit easier. But all decals were nice and easy on this. Didn't have a problem with any of them.
And that blue does stand out well underneath on that grey. Looks nice if you ask me. Quick easy way I do my wheels. Blast them in silver. These have already been primed as you saw it black on them. But blast them in silver. I do the same with uh, the exhaust as well. And then I just paint up in weight black on there like that. Just paint the wheel then. And when I come to do uh, my panel lining, I will put a little bit on uh, these just so that it highlights a little bit of detail. And then just wipe it off once I've done. As usual. There's my panel wash. I've used a, a like a browny colour, dark brown. Because it goes better with green, I think, dark, dark brown rather than the black. But just blast it all over. Leave it to dry for half an hour. And then when you come, you just rub it off with a bit of uh, tissue paper or a cotton board. I, I, I just use this uh, tissue paper like this and just rub it all off. Kitchen towel. Rubs off easy. And I will state, though, I have put another gloss coat on it over all the decals and that. So all of the kit is actually covered in gloss now. Because if you don't, you'll never get this off. It'll just stain into the paintwork. Super glue for me uh, canopies, tiniest tiniest drops as you saw there. Use my picker up tool. Ooh. Oh, forgot. I always clean it underneath. There you go. Oh, terrible at times. This is why I need picker up tool. Um, there. Simple as that with them. You can place it straight in. Quick pressing, just make sure there's no glue on my fingers. I've done that before and then had a bit of glue on my fingers. As you saw me earlier, I'm wiping the inside with IPA. And the reason I'm doing that is that it's perfectly clean. That you've got no fingerprints, no oily stains. Oops. I'm telling you, I've, I've, all fingers and thumbs. This is being old. Sometimes, there. Get in there and stay in there. <laughs> there. Ah, oh, that's better. And that's another one done. And I thoroughly enjoyed building this. It's been a cracking little kit. And the colour, it, it being an army colour, <laughs> makes a right difference. It looks lovely, I think. Finished it off with just my normal matte uh, cover over it. The Winsor Newton one, but it's brought it out. That paint, I think it looks fantastic. I've not done any weathering. All I've done is a pin wash just so you can see the panel lines look a bit better. So the kit is kind of just built from the box. Yeah, she looks lovely. A little bit of filler needed just where the wings meet. A couple of little tiny areas. One point I will show you, and I'm sure you can see it, there's a deformity there and I didn't know about it until I actually uh, painted and it's too late now but you can see just not right but it's all right it's, it happens if I'd have seen it before I'd have realized I should have filled it and then uh, painted over the top but hey what's done's done enjoy building it and that's the main thing thanks for watching everybody hope you've enjoyed it and uh, hope to see you around for next time be grateful if you'd uh, subscribe to my channel if, if you're not if it's your first time here should I say and give me a thumbs up, I love it when I see I get a load of thumbs up on a video really shows me that people appreciate what I'm putting out and if you do subscribe, remember to tick the bell icon because then you'll get notified when a, one of my videos gets put up on that note, thanks a lot everybody for watching I'll catch you later, have a good one